Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange doing political commentary for The Media Speaks. Of course, TheMediaSpeaks.com. Um, welcome aboard. Uh, this is the camera angle. No, I do not expect you to stand there and look at my pretty face. However, one thing you will want to do is listen to the entire show, because we've got news from all over the world in this show. And all of it is relevant, I think, and ties in. Um, so, it's keeping you abreast of all the news, as it were. Friends, Russian warplanes sighted off U.S. coast twice on the 4th of July. Jim Hoff from the Gateway Pundit. This bothers me greatly because what we're looking at here is, I've, I see this in comment lines all the time. Those of us in uh, whatever we want to call it, the liberty movement, the Tea Party, libertarians, whatever, there tends to be this love for Vladimir Putin just because we know that Obama is doing a terrible job. Just because we know that the United Nations and NATO is something, you know, that is less than a benefit to most of the population. There's this belief that because Vladimir Putin believes the same, that he's not part of the problem here. And that is maddening to me. I don't know how anybody could come to that conclusion. Um, many people have talked about uh, the elite's ties to the CIA. Some people even go so far as to say so about Obama. And yet we know as absolute historical fact that Vladimir Putin has, uh, from the KGB, which is the Russian CIA, and somehow we trust him. And just because he's pointing out that Obama <coughs> is doing a bad job doesn't mean that he's doing a good job. For instance, Stalin from Russia, from, uh, uh, Russia in the uh, 30s, 40s, he was a, a tyrant. He was a terrible person. He butchered people in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, uh, at least by proxy. He was a butcher. Do you know who thought that he did a horrible job as leader? Adolf Hitler. That does not mean that Adolf Hitler was a great leader because he knew that Stalin was bad. Well, listen to this. Russian warplanes were sighted off the coast of Alaska and California on the 4th of July. The warplanes were probing U.S. defenses twice. U.S. F-15s and F-20s were forced to scramble as a result of the incident. And this came the same day that Russian Premier, Pre, excuse me, Russian, Russian President Vladimir Putin called Barack Obama to wish him a happy Independence Day. Now, I know we have done some really crappy uh, things to Russia. I don't think that NATO needs to be encro encroaching on its borders. But what if uh, Obama, who I don't support, I voted for Gary Johnson, that's all you need to know. What if Obama had called Vladimir Putin on a major Russian holiday and said, you know, we'd like to congratulate you, you know, on a, another year, whatever, yada, yada, happy holiday. And then we ran planes to their border. We would be talking about what a terrible thing Obama did. <clears throat> Do you realize that this can trigger a nuclear war very easily? It takes a very... Uh, Helen Caldicott's talked about this. It takes very little breakdown in communication to have a nuclear missile strike. We're already on, we were already on heightened alert for those of you that watch this show. We reported on it extensively on the 4th of July. It's a good way to start a war. So let's get away from all of this Putin worship and realize that uh, there's plenty of room in the world for evil leaders, and Russia has one as well. Um, SHTF plan, Max Slavo. Americans with retirement accounts, beware. If our government does what China just did, you'll be wiped out. And I think one of the, one of the most well-read and well-received articles I've ever done is called How to Live Without Banks. And I wrote it. It's at the mediaspeaks.com. It's free. Go look it up. It works. I know why. Because I do it every day. Um, I've recently opened up an LLC because I'm getting into property rentals. 
and I'm going to need a bank account for uh, certain things, but that doesn't mean I'm going to use the damn thing. I'll keep enough money to keep it open, but I'm going to live exactly the same way that I outlined and how to live without banks. I don't trust banks, and I won't bank beyond what I'm forced into doing. Listen to this. It says, we've previously warned that elements within the U.S. government have been feverishly working to take control of retirement assets in America. And uh, there's a link to that here at the article. <coughs> Excuse me. The reasoning, of course, is that the government can manage your personal finances better than you can. They've already begun plans to have workers invest their earnings directly into government-managed funds. But at some point, should we get into trouble, they may look to seize those assets outright and put them under central control. That means, they call it a haircut. It means taking money out of your bank account to use to get the banks and or the government, they pretty much got themselves there in tandem, out of the mess that they put themselves in. If you don't like that, uh, gold, silver, platinum. Uh, it's the way to go. Do not keep your money in a bank. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to be sorry if you do it. It says, do you like the idea of socialized, centrally managed health care? This sounds like an impossibility in the land of the free. However, it's already been established <clears throat> with the passage of Obamacare as clear evidence. <clears throat> they should want to do this, and they will. It said it's a danger to be sure, but perhaps not as dangerous as what is happening in China right now. While Chinese stock markets are in the midst of a massive collapse, the Chinese have tried just about everything to halt the crash that has so far vaporized about 25% of investor wealth in just under a month. Zero Hedge asked, <clears throat> what do you mean when two policy rate cuts, 19 billion, is committed, is supported from a hastily contrived broker consortium? and a promise of central bank funding for the expansion of margin lending all fail to quell extreme volatility. What's that mean? Uh, what he's asking is when the government has used everything it can do, it's, you spend $19 billion here, you pass a law preventing uh, people taking money out here, you don't allow people to sell stocks, you do everything else, what happens when all of that doesn't work? It says the answer as far as the People's Republic of China is concerned, is to simply ban people from selling. Yes, you read that right. As the bloated Chinese stocks disintegrate before our eyes, the Chinese government, he writes, <clears throat> has contracted their retirement fund brokers and in no uncertain terms told them that they are not allowed to sell a single share of stock. And I've noticed that these insane things tend to be spreading from one country to the other. Um, China cuts down on free speech. Now you have, uh, we're going to get to it in a minute. The free speech is all but illegal in Spain today. I'm not kidding. I'm not being facetious or using an analogy. Free speech is almost eliminated in Spain today, even as we do this show. The, the, the uh, Cyprus banking mess. Poland did it. Now you've got China with this. What's going to be the next country that does something similar to this in order to halt a crash that they started through bad banking policies that have been pointed out by many people, uh, including Ron Paul? It says they can buy all that they want, but selling is strictly prohibited, leaving millions of pensioners just stuck watching their retirement accounts being decimated before their eyes. Of course, if they own gold and silver and platinum, the government wouldn't know what they did with it now, would they? It says, you can ban selling, which is apparently the next stop for China. According to Kajing, the country's National Social Security Fund is now forbidden from selling, but is welcome to buy. Social Security informed the public fund Social Security portfolio not only to buy sell stock. It's a... Uh, when you translate it to English, I guess. Financial reporter learned that the Social Security Council on Monday, July 6th, uh, called each raised fund's Social Security portfolio is not allowed to sell their holdings for stock. In other words, to prevent them from losing control, they have pretty much shut down their stock market. It says the Chinese economy is heavily intertwined with the U.S. economy. 
While no evidence of such exists, we'll suggest that not only was the U.S. government aware that the Chinese were about to do this, but they likely advised them to do it in the name of saving the global economy. Again, that's it's conjecture there. It says, if you're a pensioner or have a retirement account in the U.S., then this should be a huge wake-up call. When it hits the fan, and it will, the government will stop at nothing to ensure its survival and the survival of the mega banks with which it conglomerates. And we've seen it time and time again. The banks get the bailout and the people get the hose. You, know, you can chase the carrot, but in the end, all you ever really get is the stick. Uh, friends, you're listening to The Correct Views, are brought to you in part by StickerJunkie.com. You want great stickers? Do me a favor. Go to StickerJunkie.com and let David Lake know you heard about it from The Correct Views. You're going to get a discount when you do. This is our band. Shout out to Noses. This is our band right here. Stickers. They look amazing because they were made at Sticker Junkie. If you want passing time stickers, uh, <clears throat> leave a message in my comment. I'll make sure you get them. Um, Portugal's experiment in drug decriminalization is a success. And it says, many refuse to see the success. The, refuse to see the success. Easy for me to say. Mark Thornton, Mises.org. Mises is I. Some of the best articles being written today, by the way, you'll find on that that website, M-I-S-E-S. -E um, this month, Portugal celebrates 14 years of drug decriminalization. 14 years, that's over a decade for you Drake fans. The grand experiment is now considered a happy success, considering that it was adopted out of desperation and in the face of dire warnings from proponents of the global drug war. This is what led to the decriminalization. Uh, besides common sense, during the mid-20th century, it says, Portugal experienced 50 years of military dictatorship, and when leftist democratic control was reestablished in 1974, many expatriate Portuguese returned to Portugal from its colonies. Of course, many of these were dissidents, outsiders, and outcasts and many of them used illegal drugs. What happened? Well, over the next 25 years, it says, there was a surge in drug use, drug abuse, addiction, overdoses, <clears throat> and eventually a very substantial prevalence of HIV, AIDS, and other dirty needle diseases. I bet there was. For one thing, I think it's, um, I think it's worthy to note that in the 80s, when, this, when everybody thought that AIDS was the gay plague, this was a very big deal on what was going on in Portugal, and it, the whole world was taking a look. It said at the peak of this drug epidemic, the rate of drug addiction and HIV-AIDS infection was considerably higher than the rest of Europe, according to Dr. Hielo Gaelio, I have no idea, G-A-U-L-A-O, the longtime drug czar of Portugal. He was on the 11-member Anti-Drug Commission that formulated Law 32000, which decriminalized all drugs starting July 1, 2001. <clears throat> the grand experiment seems to be the result of two factors. The first is that Portugal is a relatively poor European country and was able, unable to fight the war on drugs on every front. And uh, of course, they had enough morals not to turn it into the money-making scam it is in this country. We're locking up people for marijuana. We're locking up people for uh, private use cocaine. You know what? I don't use cocaine. Uh, i dead honest. I tried it. Oh, yeah, my God. I think I was in my 20s. I tried it once and hated it. I can tell you that. It was awful. I'm already a very high-strung person. It sucked. I hated it. <clears throat> I don't use coke. I don't think you need to put somebody in prison if they do it. If they hurt somebody when they're on it, we already have laws against hurting people, and I'm in favor of putting them in prison for that. That's fine. But we've turned it into a, a money-making scam. A pr the private prison industry is its, its own uh, billion-dollar industry today. Look it up. It says the second factor is that the commission was relatively nonpartisan and simply adopted the common-sense notion that drug abuse and addiction are not criminal problems for the police to solve. Drug abuse and addiction are medical and psychological problems that are better solved by the individual with the help of professionals and social pressures. It says, uh, <clears throat> again, it mentions that uh, making them illegal is different from making them decriminalized. Uh, you can still be arrested and sent to counselors, but you don't face imprisonment. 
It's not ideal, but it's uh, again, it's better than illegal, making it illegal. It says, uh, otherwise law-abiding citizens will not be criminalized for possessing illegal drugs there. Second, drug addicts will be more likely to seek professional help when the government treats addiction as a medical rather than criminal problem. Yeah, most people would rather go to a rehab center than a prison, I would imagine. Third, the police will have more resources to address real crimes and possibly to provide subsidies for drug treatment programs. Fourth, drug addicts will turn away from dangerous synthetic drug substitutes and turn more to the natural illegal drugs like marijuana and cocaine. Fifth, if needles are legal too, then you should see fewer cases of diseases such as AIDS and HIV and hepatitis. Six, it said junkies, ghettos will shrink in size and in visibility. In some, decriminalization should result in fewer people dying and being sent to prison and more people living normal lives. Well, what happened? It absolutely worked. It has absolutely worked. There, <clears throat> they've seen a massive reduction in all of the problems that I just read off to you in that whole list. And yet our country continues to go in the opposite direction. And again, I already addressed part of why that is. It's tied into uh, money absolutely to the hilt in this country. <clears throat> Guys, I got a few more stories to get to. Brought to you in part by Mike McLaughlin. If you've never read what he's done, go to Facebook.com. M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-I-N. He writes poetry. He writes uh, short stories, political rants, and excellent at it really really an amazing writer look him up let him know hey leave a message on the comment line i heard about you from the correct views i was talking about spain a second ago you want to know how bad it is in spain um it's worse than you think in 1984 <clears throat> it comes to europe you know what 1984 is if you don't know it is a uh, it's a book by <clears throat> um george orwell that predicted many of the things that we're seeing today and of course it's, it's even worse in the book not to say we won't get there i'm just saying we're not there now um you weren't even free to uh make love to who you wanted to uh, make sure if you don't at least read the book that you uh look watch the movie one of them is even free on youtube there's been many uh many versions of it but it's important to realize simply put that it addressed absolute tyrannical government control is what 1984 is. Well, this is from Martin Armstrong at Zero Hedge. Spain has shown that it is fully on board with the Brussels authoritarian direction of ending democracy. Those in power have simply convinced themselves that the people do not understand what is good for them, so they must impose their will upon the people by raw force. How does this differ in any way? from what the justification is for imposing communism. This is the death of all freedom, and it's upon our doorstep. And uh, <clears throat> here's what the new laws are in Spain. And before I get into them, let me ask you a question while I'm doing my commentary here. Before I start reading. Isn't, wasn't it said, I should say, a wonderful thing when communism started sweeping over certain aspects of Europe after it fell in the Soviet Union? Everybody talked about how progressive Spain was and how communism was going to bring so much wonder so much wonder to the country. Do you know they're about to be looking at the same problem Greece is in um, no time at all? We'll get to Greece in a minute. No time at all. They're going to be looking at the exact same issues here in, in Spain. Well, isn't that the same, the same America that the socialist, which is pretty much communism, the socialist Bernie Sa Sanders wants for us? Isn't that real close to what Hillary Clinton wants? Almost verbatim. Don't tell me about the Republicans. You mean to tell me Jeb Bush is going to save us from communism? No. The only people running right now that really want to save us from communism is uh, Rand Paul and Gary Johnson. And uh, again, Gary Johnson, I, you know, I've got issues with him too. He, he came out with some ridiculous thing the other day regarding the flag and that but my point is, you can at least still say things like that. You might lose your job and everything around you, but you can still speak freely. Well, listen to this. And don't tell me it can't happen here. That's the chant of the, uh, the, the, the Germans right before the Nazis came. It can't happen here. 
If you photograph security personnel and then share these images on social media up to a 30,000 euro fine, particularly if the photo exposes violence used against a member of the public. In other words, hide what the police are doing. This fine could increase depending on the number of Instagram or social media followers you have. And the only way around this is mass disobedience. They need, uh, they need huge millions uh, of their population doing this every single moment of every single day, 24 hours a day, and make it a wall that they cannot stop. Uh, two, <clears throat> tweet, or retweet it, tweet or retweet information or the location of an organized protest. So you can't even tell anybody, anybody about it. Snowden-like whistleblowing is now defined as an act of terrorism. Again, redefined. Now, used to, you know, you, just just uh, giving out information is now terror. It's equivalent to you know burning someone alive or cutting their head off. If you write for a local publication, be careful what you print, whom you speak to, or whether the government is listening. Um, we again, we I, I want all of you guys to do the same thing I'm doing. Make videos like this. Make it a wall that they they can't possibly shut down. If you hate my video, I don't care. Make a better video, but make them and put them out them and out there and get them everywhere. Four, visiting or consulting terrorist websites, even for investigative purposes, can be interpreted as an act of terrorism. And that's a way to arrest journalists and uh, people that do, of all things, political commentary, like I do. Um, often, I will go to a sites where I have to look up something to verify it, to know that something was posted the way someone said that it was. So, that's a slippery slope. Five, be careful with royal jokes. Any satric, uh, satirical comment against the royal family is now a crime against the crown. Well, the crown can get on all fours, suck a fart out of my rear end, and rate the taste on Angie's list. How's that? See if that see if that makes me welcome there for their royal BS. What? They don't even have anything in Spain anymore. Like oh, like Michael Savage said, what olive oil? You can't you can't save an economy on olive oil. Uh, six. No more hassling elected members of the government or local authorities, even if they say one thing in order to get elected and then do the exact opposite. Confronting them about this hyper hypocritical behavior, even if you see them in the street chatting at a street cleaner, dining at their favorite expensive restaurant, or have their shoes shined by the physics graduate who cannot find a decent job in the country, nice line, hassling them about their behavior is now a criminal offense. Eight, or excuse me, seven, has your local river been so polluted that the plastic factory along the edge of all life is extinguished? Well, tough. Greenpeace or similar protests now are finable anywhere from 601 to 30,000 euros. They like that number. Um, I guess you can, it adds up to three sixes real nice. Uh, eight, protest in spontaneous way outside the parliament is now illegal. Nine, obstructing an officer in the course of their business or resisting arrest. Refusing to leave a demonstration when you're told or getting in the way, same fine, and they can baton you for it. Ten, showing lack of respect to officers of the law is an immediate fine of 100 to 600 euros. <laughs> Again, you mass disobedience or it's going to happen right here. Eleven, occupying, squatting, or refusing to leave an office, business, bank, or other place will, until your complaint has been heard. 100 to 600 and 12, digital protests. Writing something that could technically disturb the peace is now a crime. So they're going after bloggers. You know what? Everything you need to know is as simple as doing what I'm doing now. Reporting on it, letting people know so that they can watch for it here. Shut off the untalented Kesha crap and focus on what is going on in the world around them. And be ready for mass disobedience when it's time to do so which I would argue is well on its way. Liberty Blitzkrieg, Michael Krieger, everything you need to know about the Greek crisis and ECB fascism in two paragraphs. I love this. Very short. We're almost done here on the show. Yanis Verfakis sat down for the first interview since resigning as finance minister of Greece. He told Frank. He talked frankly with Harry Lambert of the New Statesman, and here are the two most in paragraphs from the entire tan transcript. There is no democracy in Europe, none, and here they are. Verfakis said to Schrabel, Germany's finance minister and the architect of the deals Greece signed in 10 and 12, was consistent throughout. 
His view was, quote, I'm not discussing the program. This was accepted by the previous Greek government, and we can't possibly allow an election to change anything. We can't possibly allow an election to change anything? So at that point, I said, well, perhaps we should simply not hold elections anymore for indebted countries, and there was no answer. The only interpretation I can give of their view is that, yes, there sh- that would be a good idea. It would be kind of difficult. So you either sign on the dotted line or you are out of the Eurozone. Any questions? Again, I, I was so rooting for a Grexit because they are so being held down by the EU And if our country ever allows us to get into this European Union style uh, BS here with the uh, the North American Union, then oh my God, it 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 will be will be like Greece. Okay, it's going to be a disaster. Replace the dollar with the Amero and kiss my ass. All right, guys, Infowars.com with the anti dumdy. We have a dumdy of the day every single day. We have one coming right after this. Well. We have an anti dumdy and this is excellent news. This is uh, one of the best uh, pieces of news I'll report on in a while. The video, Cop Defends a Citizen from Anti-Constitutional Security Guards. Listen to this. A short video out of Fresno, Cali, shows a police officer confronting two rental cops in defense of their civil rights and private property. An officer can be heard... Der- directing the security guards to leave a neighborhood resident in peace as he attempted to watch a fireworks display on his own property during the 4th of July. I wish they would have said why the uh, rent-a-cop was even bothering him. It doesn't make any sense to me. Did they have some kind of a law where you can't watch the fireworks if you didn't pay or something? That doesn't make any sense. It says, there is a constitution that I swear an oath to, so don't freaking mess with these citizens. Do you understand me, the officer states. I know you aren't subjected to the Constitution when it comes to your job, but don't mess with it. They have a right to their property, the unidentified officer continues. They have a right not to be searched by anybody. They have a right not to be accosted. I swore an oath to the Constitution, don't mess with it, the police officer adds in closing. While the officer's identity has remained anonymous, unfortunately, numerous YouTube commentators are praising his actions, hailing him as a model for other cops, and I would say the exact same thing. Um, The anti dumdy of the day, of course, leading us into what? The dumdy of the day. And it is every bit as dumb as you're afraid that it would be. Indeed. Oh, there it is. The dumdy music. Yep. Just correctly reporting history now can get you sued. And again, whether you like the Bible or not is irrelevant. Uh, It's a matter of historical record. The things that were said were the things that were said. If you don't like it, then, you know, you're free. It's a free country. Kind of. Kit Daniels, PrisonPlanet.com. A gay man who's getting the dumdy of the day has filed a $70 million lawsuit against two Bible publishers claiming there are translations of the Bible calling homosexuality a sin caused him emotional distress. Now again, I've I've said this repeatedly, what guy doesn't like watching two women? It's very rare that you'll find a guy that doesn't. I'm not not a, uh, a prude. But what this guy does is ridiculous. I mean, this is just plain stupid. The man... Dumdy of the day, Bradley LaShawn Fowler claims the publishers, Zandervan and Thomas Nelson, have manipulated scripture for the use of the term homosexuals in certain revised editions of the Bible. So I guess Fowler must be a, 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 a linguist, and he knows Aramaic, Hebrew, Koine Greek, Right? Because if he doesn't know at least those three languages, then he does not have any business describing a translation being wrong. Because that's the most of the language that the Bible is written in. Look up uh, Pastor Scott. She's an amazing teacher on languages. Probably one of the best biblical linguists, uh, if not uh, not only of our time, maybe ever. 
Fowler alleges that the term homosexual was deleted in later versions by Zondervan, but in their 1982 and 87 translations, the publisher used the term in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6 9 incorrectly. Liberty Voice reported, and there's a link. The older King James Version, from which his family pastor te- preaches, has caused him to be cast away by his family for its use of the word homosexual. As a result of suffering 20 years of mental instability and emotional duress, Fowler is suing $60 million from Zandervan and $10 million from Thomas Nelson Publishing for simply correctly writing history. Zondervan spokesperson Tara Powers dismissed his claims, and this is important, since Zondervan does not translate the Bible, again, that is done by the people I mentioned earlier that are experts in what I was saying with the languages, such as Dr. Uh, Dr. Scott, the Bible or own copyright for any of the translations we publish, we are not in a position to comment on the merits of how a word should or should not be translated, she said. We rely on the scholarly judgment of the highly respected and credible translation committees behind each translation and never alter the text translations that we are licensed to publish. We only publish credible translation produced by credible biblical scholars. And again, they've come out with the Queen James Version of the Bible. That'll be a dumdy for another day. Friends, you've listened to the correct views. Thank you for doing so. Sam I.B. DeGange is signing off. Do me a favor. Make sure you go to the Maple Grove Saturday because my band, Passing Time, is playing. And uh, if you're sick of the mind rot that's on the radio, if you're tired of music with lyrics that suck, then come and see us because we put a lot of thought into all that. Uh, you can donate to the show at the correct views at hotmail.com. Uh, every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. I also want to say in closing, look up the work of Kyle Court, D-Lake, and myself on The Media Speaks. Good night, friends. God bless. And if you're one of the two people on Tumblr, find the show. <laughs>